Hey everyone, this is Paul Luna and I'm doing this live right now on Facebook and so if you have any questions make sure you comment below and I'll do my best I can. This is kind of like a, a coffee talk about God and so here we go. Uh, the other day I was thinking about, uh, it was pointed out to me that in the game of Tetris that there's these little blocks and they, what they do is they're different shapes and they move down this column and what you want to do with these blocks is you want to twist them and turn them in such a way that when they get down to the bottom they make a line and then they disappear. I thought, you know what, that's kind of like life that we try to blend in so much with society that we turn and we twist and so that when we get down to the bottom uh, we kind of disappear with the rest of society we're no longer different and you know in a Christian life I was thinking maybe that's not the way we should win we shouldn't try to blend in so much with the rest of society that you can't see us anymore but that we um, that as we move along in life we are different so that way we stand out so I know in the game of Tetris, we would lose, but in life, I think we stand out and, and we're being different. And that is a good thing. Because too often we try to fit in with the rest of society. Now, I am a follower of Christ, and I was thinking about how do I stand out differently in life? How do I seem different? It, it's okay for me to like the things that society likes. Like, it's okay for me to like the Avengers movie, which was really good if you saw it recently. Um... And it's okay for me to like those things, but I also need to be different enough that people could go, you know what, Paul is a follower of Christ, and, and he is different, but I'm not sure why. What makes him different? What makes him stand out? So as a follower of Christ, I was like, how do I stand out? How do I be different than just the rest of society? And that brought me back to, like, who was somebody that was seeking after God's own heart? And I was thinking of David. And recently I've been going through David and going through 1 Samuel in chapter 30. And let me tell you what was going on in this story, okay? So David and his men and his army had been traveling out. And they're coming back home to Ziglag where they live, which is a city. And their, their kids are there, their wives are there. And as they're coming back down, they see in the distance that their, their city has been ravaged. Somebody has obviously attacked them. And so they get concerned and they get down to their city and they find that it's been torn down. The buildings have been raised. And here's the worst part. Their families are gone. Someone had kidnapped their children and their wives. And they come to find out that the Amalekites had come in, raided the city, and taken their family. And you think about the heartbreak that must have happened with David and his, and his men because suddenly his whole family's been taken away. And these men's families have been taken away. And what do people do when something like this bad happens? They start to point fingers. And David's men, who do you think they point the finger at? At him. And they started getting upset. And they started grumbling. They started thinking, you know what? This is your fault, David. If we'd been, not been gone with you, everything would have been okay. So let me read to you David's response. Here it comes. It's from uh, 1 Samuel 30. And hold on, I'm sorry, the page just turned on me. Here we go. It says this in verse 6. But David, I'm sorry, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord, his God. Listen to that. But David found strength in the Lord, his God. It's crazy to me that David found strength in the Lord, his God. When life was going crazy and his wife was taken, his children were taken, and his own army wants to kill him, if my reaction would be, I'm getting out of here. People are going to try to kill me. I'm going to run away. But you know what? No, no. David, he stops. And he finds his strength in the Lord. David's reaction is so different than what mine probably would have been. Because David said, you know what, as long as I'm in God's presence, it's okay. Your grace is enough, Lord. Long as, Lord, as long as I could be here in your presence and, and you could take care of me. This situation is bad, but as long as you're with me, it'll be okay. You know, how would it be different if, if we reacted like that? 
is that something we want? Do we want to be in God's presence all the time? Is that something that we desire to be? You know, God, I just want to be in your presence. Uh, I got bills to pay. You know, we have to pay for the house. We got the car loan. And in fact, the car's breaking down and my kids are acting up. Lord, I just want to be in your presence. Can you imagine how much different our world would be? How we would act differently if all we desired, followers of Christ, just desired to be in God's presence. If we said, God, as long as I'm in your presence, your holiness, your grace will be sufficient. So here's my thought. How do we get to that point in our life? I know for me, I think I need to start with prayer. I just need to pray to God and say, God, teach me how to be in your presence. And I need to ask him, God, God, what's in the way between me and you so that I could be in your presence all the time? And, and what do I need to change, Lord? So that's the desire of my own heart. So that's my challenge to you, that every day you would wake up and you would say, God, I want to be in your presence because your presence, your grace is sufficient. So that's my call. So let's start praying together. Tell me if you have any comments or thoughts below. Make sure you put them down in the comment section. I'll try to do my best to, to respond to them. Um, it's good talking to you guys. And uh, I plan on doing this more often. I maybe end up doing it daily. Just kind of like brief coffee thoughts. All right, thanks a lot, and I'll talk to you later.